When a visitor arrives at your education site, remember that your job is to help teach them about invasive species and how to inspect their equipment, including any locations where invasive species might be hitching a ride. Approach the boater and introduce yourself, stating the organization for which you volunteer or work. If you are a volunteer, you would say, Hi, I'm a DNR Aquatic Invasive Species Volunteer with the Long Lake Association. If you're an ambassador, you would say, Hi, I'm an Aquatic Invasive Species Ambassador with the City of Green Lake. Explain to the boater that you are there to share information about aquatic invasive species, which are plants or animals that aren't native to Minnesota. Describe the damage these invading species can do to Minnesota's ecology, lakes and rivers, recreation and economy. Next, offer to demonstrate how to inspect and clean a watercraft and trailer to keep from spreading aquatic invasive species to new bodies of water. Start your demonstration on the driver's side at the trailer's winch post. From there, work your way completely around the boat to the passenger side of the winch post. As you proceed, show the boater how to look and feel for invasive plants and animals that may be hitching a ride. Show how to look under the boat too, and remind the boater to ensure all internal compartments are drained as well. You can offer advice on how to remove and dispose of these plants and animals, but you should not touch the watercraft yourself. Teach the boater about the risk trailers present in transporting aquatic invasive species. Tell them how plants and other aquatic invasive species often can get tangled on the trailer in hard to see and hard to reach places. Explain that all aquatic vegetation except duckweed must be removed before a boat is transported. And finally, make sure the drain plug was removed when the watercraft entered the access. If it is not removed, let the boater know that watercraft users must remove drain plugs after they pull a watercraft from a lake or river. Tell them that the drains should remain open during transport. If boaters think there may be water in the watercraft, they can pull away from the access and drain the watercraft before launching. Remind the owner that drain plugs must be removed when leaving the water access as well. After the demonstration, teach the boater the simple way to remember what steps to take. Clean, drain, dry. Describe these steps. Clean. Inspect the watercraft closely to find and remove all plants, animals, and mud which might harbor these aquatic invasive species too. This is required by law. Drain. Empty any spaces or items that hold water, such as bait buckets. Remove all plugs so that any water in the boat or personal watercraft will drain out. This is also required by law. Dry. It is recommended to dry the watercraft and any equipment that has been in the water. They should be dried for at least five days before putting them in another lake or river. This is not required, but it's a great way to kill off any invasive hitchhikers that the inspection missed. As you're meeting the public at a water access, you might witness violations of the state's aquatic invasive species laws. It's important that you're clear on the regulations. It's illegal to transport water, any aquatic vegetation, or prohibited invasive species when leaving a water access location. It's illegal to transport or launch a watercraft or water-related equipment with invasive species attached. And it's illegal to transport a watercraft with a drain plug installed or the drain not open. Here are some violations that you might see. Leaving the lake or river access with water still in the boat's live well. Boats arriving at the access with the drain plug in place and the drain not open. Leaving or entering the access with invasive species on the watercraft or trailer. And launching a watercraft when it or its trailer has invasive species attached to it. Even if you see one of these violations occurring, you do not have legal authority to conduct an inspection or to prevent a watercraft from being launched. However, you can use violations as an educational opportunity to work with the boaters, explain the issue, and show them how to correct the problem. If 
you see an obvious violation and the boater refuses to correct it, you should report it to the DNR conservation officer for your area. The officer will need this information from you. The watercraft's registration number, brand, model, and color. The towing vehicle's license plate number, make, model, and color and a physical description of the person who committed the violation, including hair color and any identifiable tattoos or scars. Contact your conservation officer as soon as you believe you've witnessed a violation. Trailers and some watercraft present special concerns for carrying aquatic invasive species. When you're demonstrating how to inspect them, be sure to point out these tips to the owners. Trailers for all watercraft pose a high risk for transporting aquatic invasive species, even though they are in the water for only a short time. They can easily pick up fragments of invasive aquatic plants near the shore. These fragments can be carrying zebra mussels, spiny water fleas, and other invasive animals as well. You should show trailer owners how to check for plants and animals on the axles, spring hangers, rollers, bunks, license plate holder, and tail lights, including their brackets and wiring. For fishing boats, be sure to point out that any built-in live wells or bait wells must be drained. If these systems have an overflow tube, remind the boat owner that this can stop the system from draining properly. This overflow tube should be pulled out before leaving the access. Otherwise, the boater could get a citation for not properly removing all drain plugs. Boats designed for wakeboarding may have ballast tanks filled with water. These tanks need to be drained to the best of their mechanical ability. This means that no more water should squirt out when the pumps are turned on. There are a few optional steps these boaters can follow to reduce the risk of spreading invasive species. They can turn the ballast drain switches on when the boat is on the trailer, and they can flush the ballast tank with a garden hose at home before using the boat on another lake or river. Remind sailboat owners that they need to check the rudder and the centerboard. Some sailboats have ballast tanks, so be sure owners know that those must be completely drained before leaving the access. There are many places on personal watercraft to look for hidden aquatic invasive species. Water can collect underneath the seat and in the footwells. These must be emptied before leaving the access. The propulsion systems of personal watercraft can easily suck up plant fragments and small invaders in the water. To reduce the risk of transporting hidden plants or animals, it's a good idea to run the engine for a few seconds on the trailer to blow out any water. This can be done on two-stroke and four-stroke engines. The owners should also inspect the intakes and jet for any plants snagged in them. Remind them that zebra mussels and other invasive animals can be transported on plant fragments, so a personal watercraft can pick them up even if it's in the water briefly. As you are talking to watercraft owners, it is a good time to let them know that some water accesses will have DNR watercraft inspectors. These inspectors have educational materials too, and they are authorized to perform hand and visual inspections of watercraft and any water-related equipment. Decontamination units are available at some of these water accesses, and the inspectors can offer high-pressure cleaning with 140 degree water. This decontamination is designed to kill and remove any invasive species that may be attached.